Where am I? You're a lucky fellow. You landed in a wood near the beach. You're in Brighton. They brought you in two days ago. Now you're all fixed up. You look fine. I've lost a leg, he said. That's nothing. We'll get you another one. Now you must go to sleep. The doctor will be coming to see you in about an hour. She picked up the basin and the medicine glass and went out. But he did not sleep. He wanted to keep his eyes open because he was frightened that if he shut them again, everything would go away. He lay looking at the ceiling. The fly was still there. It was very energetic. It would jump forward very fast for a few inches, then it would stop. Then it would run forward again, stop, run forward, stop. And every now and then it would take off and buzz around viciously in small circles. It always landed back in the same place on the ceiling and started running and stopping all over again. He watched it for so long that after a while it was no longer a fly, but only a black speck upon the sea of gray. And he was still watching it when the nurse opened the door and stood aside while the doctor came in. He was an army doctor, a major, and he had some last warm ribbons on his chest. He was bald and small, but he had a cheerful face and kind eyes. Well, well, he said. So he decided to wake up at last. How are you feeling? I feel all right. That's the stuff. You'll be up and about in no time. The doctor took his wrist to feel his pulse. By the way, he said, some of the lads from your squadron were ringing up and asking about you. They wanted to come along and see you, but I said that they'd better wait a day or two, told them you were all right, and that they could come and see you a little later on. Just lie quiet and take it easy for a bit. Got something to read? He glanced at the table with the roses. No? Well, nurse will look after you. She'll get you anything you want. With that, he waved his hand and went out, followed by the large clean nurse.